get in Lads Mexico in shambles right now after that tournament, during that tournament, and after that tournament. So we're here to review what happened, what's going to come next, and all that jazz. But leave a like if you think Jaime Lozano should be sacked. I don't know these guys' opinions, but if your opinion is that Jaime Lozano should be out of Mexico, leave a like on the video down below. Um, I guess I'll ask you that first. Jaime Lozano, is he, is, does he stay or not? Yeah, let's let's address the massive, massive elephant in the room. Um, yes. See, I personally, he's got to go. Personally, he's got to go. But mm. I've read reports in the Mexican media that he is not leaving. He's he's planning to stay until 2026. Um, <laughs> so that was very discouraging. That came yes. out like literally after the game, like a couple of days after the game, that it's reported that he's going to stay. I want him gone just purely because he's so unimaginative. Um, you know, mm. when we lost to Venezuela, I was actually really – I was actually happy with the way we played. I just thought we were just didn't finish because um, I, I felt like we were the better team. We deserved to get something out of it, and we didn't um, because we just didn't finish. Uh, and I was happy with that performance, I'm being honest with you. Jamaica, I was also happy with that performance. Um, Ecuador, I was not happy with that performance. I <laughs> felt like it was a, we ran out of ideas very early on. Um, when a team starts booting the ball up and trying to just win headers around the 75th minute, that's how you know you're out of ideas and you don't know how to break this team down. And right. uh, that, that was us. That was us. We didn't have many chances. And the ones we did, we kind of fluffed. Um, Santi, looking at you. Um, Something, man, as we'll talk about in this video, too. But, but uh, good God. But yeah, I, I hope he goes just because he's so stubborn, man. Uh, I, I don't have the stats, but I know Alvarado, Chino, and like, you know, all the wingers we had on the bench combined didn't have enough minutes uh, compared to Antuna. And Antuna doesn't do anything with the squad all he does is crossing the ball and uh it's very frustrating to watch him play but i think he has his favorites and it's very hard to see him not stick to that uh stick for him to move away from that and that's the frustrating part uh especially against uh venezuela uh, the subs he brought on were really good vega looked really good and then he just didn't play you no know, you played but you didn't get the ball a whole lot but in that third game but yeah he's got to go but unfortunately he's not going to go that's the only issue that's fair. And, I mean, and how, I, how much of his struggles though are Mexico's players? Do you think? Like, I don't. I don't the, think it, it, it. When you when you go set up against a team and you're struggling to break them down, just like being able to create chances, it goes down to the manager. Because at one point when Martinez came on against Ecuador, all we did was boot up the ball and hope he wins a flick on, and he did every single time. Right. But it's just like it's just the that showed me that right there that he had no idea how to break down this Ecuador team. Like we looked lacklustered flat the entire game against Ecuador. Like it wasn't like we were playing for our lives basically. We weren't playing like that. But I think it's I think it's it's purely down to him because I think we have good quality, not like amazing quality, but I think yeah, Edson solid. Alvarez did coming out injured with his hamstring injury did put a massive dent in our squad because I think we were missing that guy that could mm. drive the ball forward, break that second, third line, you know what I mean? Be able sure. to be able to drive. And I think we had uh, we missed that. And I think Pineda tried it. Romo just can't do it because he's too slow. But um, and but knew, Alvarez, just, it's hard to take the ball off of him. I have no idea how he does it because sometimes he looks really kind of like, I don't know, like kind of like, I don't know how to describe it. He's kind of like, how do you describe that? Like someone who's like uncoordinated sometimes, like looks uncoordinated, but he's not. Hmm. I, I don't know. It's like he looks uncoordinated sometimes when he's on the ball, but he's able to keep it anyways. It, it, and I, I saw it all last season and he does the same thing for Mexico. So I think missing him was a massive part because I think we lack that ability because I don't think we had the ability to be able to pass out as much as we did, especially with uh, our wingers that we had playing. I'm talking about you, Quinones. Fucking dumbass. Anyways, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I think, I think the, I'm gonna say 80 percent of it goes down to the manager. I think it's a bit of a different 80. situation with uh, the United States and Mexico in terms of who's to blame, because mm. uh, uh, I, individually wise, U.S. has better players than Mexico does, but um, it's a different situation in the sense that we're in a transitional period and we don't have a, our golden generation because our golden generation has already passed. So right. we're in a transition state. U.S. is not in a transition state. So I think it goes down to the manager to be able to put all these players together because we've gone through so many in the span of a couple of years. I think we've gone through four-ish. No, three or four since the World Cup. Something like that. Three? Three? I think three. Three? Yeah. 
Um, so yeah, it, it, I think it's just trying to find the right manager that clicks. Cause I think with, yeah. with like how I mentioned, I mentioned the U S videos, uh, pol- politics, it was highlighted in that, but I also think the, for the Mexican Federation politics, it plays a massive factor in who plays and how much and all that jazz behind the scenes. I'm sure something will eventually come out about all that, but, um, but yeah, I, I think he's got to go and we got to find someone else. Just in that simple. I can't even say look forward to the Olympics because we didn't even qualify for that shit. So it's like, <laughs> fuck. Um, for for Jaime Lozano, one, how do you not play Piojo? It needs to start over on Thuna every single game. Oh, Rico. He's the, yeah, he's he's probably the best winger in Liga MX right now. And for him to like, par- I don't even know if he played. Did he get any no, minutes? I don't play. know if he did. He didn't play. Okay, if, if, to get zero minutes in this entire team when Antuna is doing nothing, when Chino's doing nothing, when Quinones is barely doing anything. Um, except lose the ball. What's the, He's except really lose the ball. What, what, why are you not playing Piojo in this entire tournament? I, you have to be playing him at some point. Um, Fraud Watch, though, let's talk about Santi real quick. Santi Jimenez is on <laughs> Fraud, Fraud Watch, dude. And there's. Obviously, there's more factors than just him. He's not a player that creates on his own. He gets opportunities. He relies on others to give him passes. And granted, he doesn't get the most opportunities. He doesn't get as many as he should for the quality of player he is. But when he does get his opportunities, he shanks him. He is terrible. When is when? Why don't we gonna start talking about him not being the man for for Mexico? Because everybody everybody thinks he's what one, one of the top G twenty three strikers in the world. No, I know. Mm. I think that. I think. But in my opinion, he's he's going to be the next Hugo Sanchez, and with a way that fantastic for club doesn't do shit for country, um, which is unfortunate because I think if anything, Mexico really really needs that new guy to piggyback on and to save the future for from from mediocrity. And Santi's supposed to be that guy, but there is nothing indicating that he's going to be that guy. He already has what twenty something caps and like four goals, like three or four goals. Um, it's yeah, it's it. it so we need to start the conversation about how he is. Is not that guy from Mexico, and you got to start changing it up. And hopefully, that a new manager would change up the system a little bit, like get some better opportunities where he can, you know, score some tap ins at least to get his 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 confidence going because that's what he needs. But uh, I, I I can see I, I there's moments where my, when Martinez came on the big guy, mm. anyone headers. Mm-hmm. There's moments where I'm like, okay, we need to play two up top because Santi, mm. the way we play, we're just kind of like crossing it in especially with Anthuna we're just hoping for the best making right. making uh Santi run run these balls down or try and win these headers and he's just first off he's not big enough to do that and you, right. know, you can't ask him to run all game long so I I think I think he just needs more help in that department I think yeah I think he's had his chances especially against Venezuela one against Ecuador where he's absolutely shanked like done really bad and 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 as a and it's a lot of pressure on him too, because you know everyone's saying, uh, you know, he's supposed to be arguably better than Chicha at this point because yeah. of everything he's done for club. So I think it's a lot. I think the pressure has a lot to do with it, like just like the men- mental side of the game. But uh, he yeah. he has to finish those type of chances. Even his dad said it in an interview. Hmm. He was like, he, he said that he has to finish those type of chances. He he gets there's a lot of pressure on him, but he has to finish the those easy chances that he would easily do for Fine Nord, right? Feinberg? Yeah, Feinberg, yeah. That and he's he, he literally did all season. So, um, yeah. But I, I think he needs a little bit of help in the in the way we play, in the way Jimmy Lozano plays. So, I think um, I think starting Mar- playing a two up top, maybe a 4-2-4. Four, four, hmm. I, I know it's a bit risky. But um, I, I think just winning those flick-ons, being able to control the ball like Martinez does in the air, I think would be a massive help to uh Santi going forward, but it's just a, it, once again, it depends on how Jimmy wants to do it, and Jimmy is definitely not going to do it. But I could see, I could see a different manager doing it, but I doubt it. I doubt it. I, I also want to want to shout out another fraud watch. Well, I don't know if it's fraud watch because I don't know if he's ever that good, but I th- I thought Pineda was terrible, <laughs> just terrible. Um, the, whole, the whole tournament up for him. The first game we watched, hopes. the first game we watched was bad. I, I mean, right. he was really bad. And then I watched the um, – I don't think I watched Venezuela Mexico, but I watched Mexico versus Ecuador the first, like, half. And I would see him get the ball in, like, a promising position, and then he'd just go for a long shot. Just trying oh, to, like, that bang shit. it. Oh, you just reminded yeah. me of that. <laughs> that <laughs> shit was so he annoying. Just kinda, he just kind of <laughs> shoot and hope. 
I'm like, dude, there's runners to your right and left. Santi's in the middle. He had to crowd an area, but like maybe trying to find him some space. But no, he's just like, nah, I'm gonna have a pop. And then yeah. it gets blocked. Real They're life like, pro clubs. <laughs> yeah, for real. It's, and I just thought he, and as an attacking midfielder, especially when Santi, like you said, acquires those balls, it's so important to his success and the winger's success. And I thought he just wasted so many good opportunities to make the offense just tick a little better and maybe get that that possession where they score. You know, all you need is one successful possession and then you score. So right. I thought he wasted so many just just shooting and hoping. Like like he was trying to like – he thought he was better than like passing it off to his teammates or something. And I just – I don't get it. I don't get it. Yeah, I, he, I was so infuriating. I I, yeah. I had high hopes for him. I really did go in. I remember in the, my in my best eleven, I was like, oh yeah, he's gonna be able to do it, find the passes for us. He did the complete fucking opposite of what I what I was <laughs> hoping he would do. Um, and, and and I think there's no way that that guy is our best cam in, in the whole country of Mexico. No, there's no way he is the best <laughs> no. cam. That we got. Get off the streets, bro. I guarantee you, he'll be finding those passes better. <laughs> guarantee. I'm just saying Flores was on the bench from Tigres. Yeah, I was saying myself uh, Flores. The most promising youngster that we have at the moment, I would say personally, um, in terms of from Liga Mekis. Uh so yeah, I, I think uh I think he should have been given a shot, but of course he's not. I don't I honestly so some, some some of these players on the bench, like I'm gonna say Alvarado, but I call him Rico because he looks like Rico from Penguins of Madagascar. <laughs> um but um, yeah, he should have he should have got some chances. Vegas should got more chances, but I think it's just time to switch up things because I think we're Mexican national teams too set in their ways and it's very frustrating to watch. Yeah. Um, because I think we could be doing a lot better. We had a harder group in the United States, or one could say, especially with Venezuela finishing top. No one expected that one happening. I'm glad they lost yesterday. Shout out those Canadians, baby. Um, but uh, yeah. I think I think in terms of expectations going into the tournament, real quick, I, I think they were they weren't high, but we were expecting to get out of the group stage, and we did not, and that's embarrassing because it's the second major tournament where we have not gotten out of the group stage, and mm. arguably one of the worst Mexican sides in recent recent memory is is this side right here, and it's, it's not even it's, arguable. It is it is one of the is, worst Mexican sides in history. But yeah, it's frustrating. But um. I will shout out. There's a lot of negatives with this Mexican side. Uh, you, can, <laughs> you can really pick out left back, right back. Can't, midfield was a bit of a problem. I, I'll give credit to Luis Chavez. I thought he did a very good job um, for what he for basically handling that midfield all by himself at certain points. Uh, so um, I think he did a very good job. Uh, yeah, but I want to give shout out to Johan Vasquez and Cesar Montes. Um, I thought they did had an excellent tournament um, overall. I think they had some slight issues like they have with pace but overall i thought they played very very well all, all three games and they deserved a bit more so uh yeah shot those two guys goalkeeping situation oh my lord we talked about in the united <laughs> states the united states having issues but fuck dude uh, i saw them warming up the backups right um i saw the backups warming up Oh my, the amount of mistakes they were making during their warm up were crazy. I get it's a warm up, but at that type of level, they were like letting in like straight through their hands or like they'd be diving, catching like this, and it'd pop out and go in. I, I was honestly bamboozled by some of the shot stopping <laughs> ability by them. I was, I was genuinely, I was like, there is no, I get it. It's a warm up. You know, you're not going to play unless something crazy happens. But like, yeah. there's no, no way in your right mind you're going to be doing that. In a warm up, like no, you don't do that shit. I was just like, right. that shit was embarrassing. I got it on tape too, so <laughs> which is the funny part. It's on the vlog, but there, you know, there's enough shit in the vlog that was bad, so I don't want to add to it. But um, uh, yeah, that was that that was hard to watch. I was like, okay, now I get it. <laughs> I understand yeah. why Julio Gonzalez is playing if, if that's what they're doing. Julio Julio Gonzalez, like even even him. He cannot grab a ball to save his life, dude. He cannot yeah. grab a ball. It was embarrassing. I he, hit every he looked sing- scared I, the entire I, I time. Every every game, yeah. he looked scared. Like, he was nervous. I, I can't remember a single nervous. shot on him where he grabbed. Like, I'm, really, yeah. I'm genuinely trying to think if about he, it. And if he did almost catch it, at least it dropped right to his feet. Yeah, true. It dropped right true. to his feet. But, yeah, it was just like the, the ball handling skills was not there. Terrible. It was not there. Can we also... Just at your fraud watch, um, as I do every year, 
Jorge, Jorge Sanchez, Sanchez, dude. Jorge <laughs> Sanchez is just. <laughs> I, I I am. God, Jorge Sanchez has just to do one thing where I'm like, okay, congrats, Jorge. Like, good job, Jorge. No, he just moved to Cruz Azul too, right? I'm pretty sure. Uh, I think yeah. like literally there yeah. the day before. Yeah. yeah, he just moved to Cruz Azul, and. I mean that good for him. That because that's his level of football. If if that, I don't even know if that. But Jorge Sanchez is just on another planet in terms of how underwhelming he is every single year, bro. Bring bring we Mexico needs Julian Julian back, one hundred percent. Mexico needs Julian to come back. Oh, you know, I actually saw like, him at the game. I know. You, I wasn't in any of the clips. I was. I thought you were gonna record him. Sorry, I didn't. There are so many people around him. I didn't want to be like, like you yeah, know what I mean. No. People were just get, people were just grabbing him. I felt so bad. People were just grabbing yeah. him and taking a picture with him. He was a nice guy about it, though. He he, he took as many pictures as he could. Yeah, he knows. He At knows. one point, I was literally stood right next to him, and I went, "Oh," because I took the elevator, and then he was right there, and I was like, "Oh," <laughs> and then I hey. walked in my in the elevator. Um, that was funny. But- that part was funny. <laughs> Julian brings so much more to the team than than Jorge Sanchez, dude. Jorge Sanchez is just there just because they have they have to feel it right back. That is the only thing for me. Um, I will say though, a positive spot for I don't, you. I think you cut out when you were t- t- saying earlier, so I don't know if you said it, Andres. But um, the left back, Arteaga. Oh, I, I really not. like him. I, I actually, I really like. I, I did not like his performance. Really. I I, yeah, I, I, I thought I think, he got I caught out way too many good. times. I think obviously obviously he's young, he has a lot more opportunities, but I think he sh- he should have been brought into the team a little bit sooner than he was. Mm-hmm. I think he's going to be very solid. Stop forward. playing Cagado, right. though, man. <laughs> Not that guy. Well, oh, he I got mean, dropped though. About time. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Thankfully, he should have been coming. dropped sooner though. He should have yeah. dropped way yeah. sooner. He, um, I think yeah, it's because he's young. He's got one of those players. He's got potential though, for sure. I just think. Sometimes he gets caught up ball watching, and I and also I mm-hmm. think he stepped up a few too many times, and which left gaps for us. So right, and that's why I think Cesar Montes and um, uh, Johan Vasquez shine is they were able to cover that ground for him. But I, right. I think to, to give him some credit and you know not to bash on him, I think that's just going to take time to be able to recognize it, uh, yeah. recognize the spots, and especially just getting used to the system. Because think about it, he did just get chucked in there like he didn't play a whole lot of games for Mexico. Before this tournament, only yeah. played like two friendlies, and then bam, you're the starting left back of the Mexican national team. So it's like, okay, mm-hmm. you got to give him some credit. He did he did well in certain situations, but other situations not so much. I liked Vasquez more because I think that he was he got really aggressive like on the tackles and anything that came in, I thought he just kind of cleared it out like relatively without like yeah. any pressure on him, which I think. After seeing some of the Mexico like defenders in previous World Cups, I thought that was very needed. Just like some someone just like take take the time to just boot it out, and you know you don't feel like nervous that they're gonna miss it, and that all of yeah. a sudden you got someone on goal or something. You know, um, I also so I thought, think the oh sorry ahead, finish no 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 I, that was it go ahead. I was gonna say I think the physicality of these Como Bowl teams also had a factor into why they did so well because they're not. They're pacey, but they would rather, you know, be more physical. And I think that's mm-hmm. what helped them succeed as well because uh, they, they, they're they willing to bump bump into you and try and make try and throw you to the ground and stuff like that. So I think that helped them too. It was just the style of play we were playing against. And uh, honestly, these comable teams, man, they flop so much. It's it's it's, it's embarrassing, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Uh, that, they're, that's they're like all they're overly them. aggressive, but they're, overly like Yeah, and, and then they can't the take fall. it. They can't take it. As yeah. soon as you give it back to them, they're like, oh, like, how dare you hit me? Like, bro. What's that? That shit's embarrassing. Imagine being a player and just <laughs> or like in the fucking Venezuela game when they were up, dude. I kid you not. Uh, someone hit their shoulder walking past one of the Venezuelan players, bro. He fell to the floor like he got punched. I was like, I was, and it was off the ball too. It was off the ball. It wasn't even involved in the play. I was and just one like, one issue with that too. There's a reason that they do that too, especially in this tournament, because we'll talk about this later in another video. But the referees. Gives so much more leeway to South American teams than than the Coca Cola teams to this tournament. Like there were so many games where the referee just did not have control of the game, and as a result, each team, if they wanted to, could just abuse the crap out of the other team and then pretend to be abused back. I mean that that's that's what was happening in the Venezuela Canada game last night. Is that you know Venezuela realized that the referee wasn't going to call shit, 
So Venezuela was then absolutely demolishing Canada's team. They're absolutely demolishing Canada's team, and they weren't. Nothing was being called, and uh, yeah. So th- th- that's why South American teams are doing it because I feel like there's a there's a little bias there, a little little inconsistency, lack of impartiality by referees. So yeah, some bullshit. Um, it's really a some quite, bullshit. Quite. Um, okay. Well, I mean, I think I, I feel as though that's all we have for, for this video. So as as Mexico moves forward, and if Jaime Lozano does stay or not, we will obviously talk about either scenario. So we have a lot of content moving forward for Mexico on this channel. So if you're interested in more L3 content, make sure you subscribe to the Get Full Podcast. Otherwise, do you guys have anything else to say? I don't think I don't think I do. Leave a like on the video if you think Jorge Sanchez is terrible and should not be starting a game for Mexico <laughs> ever again. And hey, he um, was good in that Jamaica game, bro. He was One okay. game out of three. He was, he was good at Jamaica. It was, Jamaica. <laughs> it was the weakest team in the in the group. He was okay. It doesn't mean crap. He's gonna be. He, he he's good in five aside if you play on the street too. Like it doesn't matter. <laughs> if he plays pickup. He looks good, anyways. He looks good. That's that, that was a good one. All right, but uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching and peace.